Transmission, segment four. Acquiring contemporary. It has been 99 days since the great catastrophe. The messenger speaks. On the 21st day of December 2012, Desmond activated the global Aurora Borealis device and protected the Earth from the sun's deadly coronal mass ejection. On the 21st day of December 2012, humanity carried on without a care in the world. People went to work, people went to school, and people went to the well for water. On the night of December 21st, 2012, as the sun set on their days, humankind went to bed. On the morning of December 22nd, 2012, humankind was graced with yet another morning. They never knew that on the previous day, the world almost ended. We thought that would have been... enough. And it was, until it wasn't. Time is unyielding. It always corrects itself. The language of time works in many ways, two of which you can understand, as you are now. Linear continuity is a simulation that allows for variations. Within the linear continuity, there are nodes, choke points, moments where algorithms converge the flows of superposed possibilities to a single moment, where only one absolute truth is possible. Paths are fluid. Continuous. Nose are static. Changeless. And the wave function collapses the paths into nodes which branch out. 
again and again. And again. And so I wonder, can you feel the wave collapsing, trying to course correct Desmond's act of defiance? The incoming node needs the world to end. The algorithms have been carving the flow of possibilities towards that end for over 100 years now. A labyrinth of trenches filled with mud and mustard gas. Families cowering in fear as V2s vaporize their dwellings. Fire born from the bellows of the Los Alamos laboratory, fueling global catastrophes. The Serpikov 15 incident of 1983. The Doomsday Clock, tucked away in an office at the University of Chicago. It's needle moving as the years go. The node is near. Perhaps you knew. Perhaps you felt it too. That the world is closing in on you. <laughs>